everyone, this is the video for module um, 2-B. The purpose of a combination journal is supposed to make things easier and supposed to make things a lot quicker for you. So that's the reasoning behind it. So let's go ahead and work through the first problem. So we're given journal entries and then we're giving the, the Excel file. So the first thing we got to do is, like normal, is enter in the date. So it's a little tight, so you may have to expand the column. Okay, we invested cash in the business, so that's going to be a debit to cash. The description would be the business, so it would be the owner's name, and then capital. Let me see if I can zoom in a little bit for you. Okay. Okay, for some reason it's not letting me zoom in. It's up. There we go. Helps if I'm out of the cell. Okay, and so then we also have consulting fees. So, so that would be the revenue account that we're going to use. And so for this purpose, we're going to credit general the general account for the $10,000 to capital. So the second is we paid the rental shop, so that would be the second, $400 for the month. So we're going to debit $400. We're going to type in that it was for rent expense. And then it's going to be a debit for $400. So instead of using specific accounts like we would typically use, we are using just the general account for most transactions unless it is wages or consulting fees. And then those would go in the specific accounts. So we're going to that's the purpose behind it. It's supposed to save time. So the next is on the third, we purchased a delivery a, car, a cart on account for Waltz Wheels for $1,000. So for this one, we're, we're not touching the cash because we purchased it on account. So we're gonna write delivery account. And then below that, we're gonna write down that it's an accounts payable. Then we're going to write down who it's to, and it's a credit. So first, the delivery account, we're going to debit, because it's an asset, for $1,000. Then we're going to increase accounts payable for $1,000. And so that's going to cancel those out. The next one is we purchased office supplies. Make sure we get the date. So we're decreasing cash 250. And we're going to tell, say what it is. It's office supplies. And then we're going to debit $250 because we purchased an asset. Okay, on the 6th, we paid our phone bill. So that's going to be $51. Phone expense. And then again, it's an expense, so we're going to debit $51. The next transaction is on the 8th. We received cash of $428, so we're going to increase our cash. And then we're going to show that it is... Sorry, I forgot to change this for this for the B problem. Okay, and then we, shoot, 
we received four hundred and twenty eight dollars okay the next transaction on the 11th we paid our electricity bill of thirty seven dollars so electricity expense Pardon the text message. I thought I had that closed. So we have electricity expense and it's $37 for an expense. The next transaction on the 12th, we paid our part time employee of $480. Then we're just going to go over to Wages expense, and do 480. Next transaction on the 13th. Oops. We paid for postage stamp. It's $29. That would be to miscellaneous expense. And that would be $29. So it's pretty, it's pretty simple once you get the hang of it. So we received cash of 382. We're going to make sure we put it in delivery fees. Again, I thought that was turned off. On the 18th, we made a payment on account for the previously purchased. So that's going to be $90. So it's going to accounts payable and then Walt's wheels and then we are going to show that we are decreasing our accounts payable. On the 21st we withdrew cash $250. That's going to be Instead of the capital account, we're going to put it into the drawing. And that's going to be a debit of 250. So, so far, we are almost done. On the 24th, we paid for liability insurance policy of 180. So that's going to go to prepaid insurance. And then that is an asset, so that's going to be $180. On the 26th, we received cash, so that's $292. And then we're going to make sure we put it in delivery fees. And then on the 29th, we paid our employees. So we're going to go over and now we have to total the columns. So to make things easy, I'm just going to have Excel do the math. And I'm just going to copy the formula over. Okay, and again, we're going to continue. Sometimes these formulas, the cells are not formulated correctly. So if you get the strange symbols, just change it to any font that you want. And apparently my, there you go. And then we're just gonna transfer Okay, so now that everything is titled up, we have to prove that the columns are the same. So for the debit columns, we have cash, general, wages, expense. And so we're going to put the amounts that we have. And then for the credit columns, Again, we have cash, general, 
Sorry about the text. And then we have delivery fees. And then we have 2247, 11,000, and 11,02. And then we're just going to total these columns just to make sure that everything matches. And so here you can see that both everything balances. If you have any questions on this problem, let me know and have a great day.